I think all you guys want to learn about is C200 tricks and tips. So maybe I should do that. Okay, so today I'm gonna to talk about C200 color grading. Now, for those of you not familiar with color grading, it might be a good idea to kind of check out another video on what the goal is, but basically color grading is taking this boring, bland, gray looking footage that we get out of cinema cameras like the C200 and making it have a look or a style, whether that be something creative or just making things look correct. Different projects have different needs. Uh, so today though, I was gonna focus on the C200 RAW files as the workflow for those are a bit different. So I have my project set up in Premiere. All I've done is imported a couple of RAW clips from my C200. As you can see here, uh, I've got one clip pulled down into my timeline and we can kind of scrub through this a little bit um, and it's just, you know, usual log footage. To start, let's talk about how Premiere Pro sees this footage. So in our effect controls tab, we can find the Canon RAW light settings. And those are where we can adjust what we generally think of when we think of shooting RAW. Um, like a still camera shooting RAW, we can adjust our white balance, our exposure, our color space, and our gamma um, all after the fact in Premiere Pro. Now this was added at some point last year. When you first got the camera, this wasn't possible, but now it is right inside of Premiere's native program. So if we go up top, um, we can hit the default to reset. Our default is always gonna be Canon Log 2. We have the option of doing Canon Log 3, 709, YDR, or DCI. In addition to that, we also have color space. We have Cinema Gannet, 2020, P3, 709. Now generally, that Canon Log 2 is fine. I'm gonna grade this footage anyways for most of the projects I'm shooting raw, but if for some reason you needed to shoot raw but make a quick edit for social or something like that, you could quickly change it to one of the other ones and kind of get pretty close right away. So if we look here and we look at our footage on the right, if I change this to BT709 and then I can change it to BT709 color space, and as we can see on the right side, we're a lot closer than we are if we go to default, which is back to this. Every project has different needs and demands. Personally, I'm gonna leave it in Canon Log 2. I've tried others. Uh, Canon Log 2 is not the closest. It actually requires the most work to get it to look proper, um, but it does give you the widest dynamic range and the most data available as you grade the footage. Um, again, that can be good or bad, but another advantage is you don't have to swap all your clips all day to another color space. So for instance, if you're editing a video and you have 25, 30 clips, um, each one of those would need to be changed to like Canon Log 3 or whatever gamma and all that stuff. So unless you have a really good reason, why not just leave it in Canon Log 2 and adjust from there. So if we go to the top, we have color temperature, which is white balance, blues to yellows. So for instance, if we put it at 2000, we'll see everything should get very blue. And if we put it up at 7000, everything would get very warm. Now it will keep whatever you had the camera set to, so it doesn't come in at a default value. Um, but I think we're gonna go somewhere around like 5,400. We did a color meter reading for this shoot, um, and that's kinda a little bit warmer than where we were, which is gonna give us a nice feel. Tint will be your pink to green. Exposure can be adjusted just like you're used to in Lightroom. Um, so let's just go down a little bit, give this a little more mood. And again, I'm gonna leave this color space and gamma alone. So what we've really set in this effects control panel is kind of the base level of where I'm gonna start grading from. You're not actually color grading in your raw settings. You're just basically setting up the basics. Now again, these are all non-destructive, meaning any change you're making in there is just the way Premiere reads your raw file. Um, it's just like in Lightroom or any other raw-based photo program. Um, you're not making any actual changes to the file. It's just how it's opening said file. Another quick note. All these changes you make in the effect controls to the master file are gonna to apply to that clip anywhere else you use in the timeline. So where this would apply is like say a interview where you're gonna use a clip of someone talking at maybe one minute in your time code and then you have the camera recording for say 15, 20 or even an hour. Um, if you use another clip of that from 20 minutes later, the settings you adjust on your master from like section A will also apply to section B. Meaning that if you pull in your interview in 10 different spots, you only have to go and fix it in one of them. So if you know your interview needs to be put at 5600 and minus 0.5 or whatever exposure, you don't have to go and find every single clip in the timeline. This can also burn you though, because like if you make an adjustment on one, we'll say that later maybe the lights change or you guys change something, well it's gonna burn you because now you gotta go and 
make a nested clip or do some other workarounds to make that look right. Now this is gonna play through pretty slow because I'm rendering the full raw file. Now this is where proxies come in and they will let you play back while you're editing and I will show you more of that in a different video. So you can click on this clip and do all of your color adjustments within that clip. I recommend not doing that. I recommend going over here to new, make an adjustment layer, uh, we can set it to the default, and we're just gonna drag this over top, make it the length of our clip. So by using an adjustment layer, instead of making our adjustments on the actual clip, we can put several clips underneath one big adjustment layer and they'll apply to everything below it. Um, this makes your workflow kind of nice because generally you're shooting a scene that kind of all needs the same things. Uh, you can even build up multiple adjustment layers or you could get a kind of a look on your adjustment layer and then make specific adjustments inside of those clips. What I really like with RAW though is often those minor adjustments like color and exposure, I'm kind of making in the RAW settings, not through Lumetri. Uh, so this saves me a little bit of a step and also makes things a little bit cleaner and neater in my workflow. So now we're gonna go to the color panel. I have my own color panel that I have made here. So over here on the top left, I have a vector scope and a waveform. These are just my preferred ones, but you can change them to all different kinds of things. Everyone has their own way of looking at it. Uh, these are really important to get accurate color and get things ready for delivery. So again, we're gonna make sure we have our adjustment layer selected. If we select the clip, our adjustments are gonna be made onto the clip. We wanna make sure we have our adjustment layer selected. So I'm gonna go over here and find a good part of the frame where I have some skin tones uh, and have some of these nice details in here. I generally start with my blacks and whites. These are kind of set in my contrast points. And as we see over there on that waveform, we can see the information going down towards black. And same thing with the whites, we're gonna see the top of that waveform go up as we pull in some more contrast. Uh, we're gonna need some saturation, so we pull in a little bit of that. And then our exposure, we set through the raw setting. So we don't, I don't like to touch the exposure and the white balance in here because I'd rather do it in a non-destructive raw editor. So after I've worked in this basic correction, if we worked our way down creative, we could pull in some tints and more creative things as the name implies. Uh, but for right now, I know that my saturation and vibrance are gonna need to come up. So I'll add a little bit of that. And I also add a little bit of sharpening just to start. Uh, where I like to go though is curves. Now in 2019, we have a lot of functionality in our curves. Uh, so this is where I like to get my contrast from. Now one thing you're gonna notice as you start to grade this footage, you may now see like, oh wait, maybe my white balance is a little bit off or maybe my exposure is a little bit off. So we can go back to that master setting uh, in the effect control panel and make adjustments at any time. Uh, the, again, they're non-destructive, they're separate of each other. If you go and try to correct your white balance, your exposure with Lumetri, you're doing so in kind of a more destructive way. They don't talk to each other. So if you make an adjustment with your exposure in Lumetri, uh, it's not gonna make the adjustment on your raw settings, if that makes any sense. So if we go back up to creative, we can add a little bit of shadow or highlight tint if we want to, you know, so we can add a little bit of blues to those shadows maybe, kind of intensify the oranges and the in the highlights. Uh, kind of give us a little bit of that morning look we were going for. Um, we're getting somewhere kind of good here. I think I'm going to go back to my master file though and make an adjustment to this file though because I think my exposure adjustment was probably unnecessary. So I'm gonna go back here and now I can go back to my scopes. I think that looks a lot better. I am gonna add one of these creative adjustments. Um, we can load in LUTs or anything like that, but I think I want this to be a little bit darker. I'm do this one and bring it way down in intensity. So maybe like somewhere like that. So now you're all finished, you can export this just like a regular file. Um, raw files do take longer to export and they are more intense on your computer, so it's kind of harder on the machine to use it. Another great reason to use proxies when you're working on your edits. I hope you guys like this. I really would love some comments on some other C200 things you need help with. Uh, go find me on Instagram and follow me over there. Uh, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. I mean, uh, this channel's been going for a year and still doesn't have too many followers, so hopefully I can get that number up in 2019. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody.